Greetings, War Thunderers. This is Longshot with you again, with a guide to flying the Lockheed P-38G Lightning in Arcade. Its nose contains four 50 cal machine guns and one 20mm Hispano cannon. It packs quite a punch. You don't need to worry about convergence either. I'll use the new X-ray feature to look at the internals, beginning with armour, which shows decent protection for the pilot if attacked from behind or from directly in front. You won't lose your pilot very often in this plane. I'll just switch to show the structural components. And what I'm looking at here are the highly exposed coolant reservoirs. If you take any damage at all, you're very likely to develop a leak with one or both engines that will eventually lead to them overheating and shutting down. The fuel tanks are clustered in the usual location on the wings inboard of the engine and protected by spars. Don't however make the mistake of assuming these tanks are well protected or are self-sealing. In War Thunder right now, they're basically firebombs, waiting for a stray spark to light them up. So, how does the plane handle? As usual, I've run a test flight to find out, and I'll begin by banking the plane and performing a horizontal elevator turn. I'm flying smoke and I'm performing my quick and dirty check of its turning ability, which is to look at the size of the circle, which is quite large, and to see if it can catch its own smoke trail, which it cannot. The plane is keeping its speed in the turn above 300 km an hour, which is great, but it's at the cost of a steady loss of altitude. This test is enough, though, to show to me that the Lightning will likely lose a turning battle against Yaks and Spitfires, not to mention Zeros and Chikers. What this plane can do, though, is loop. Provided you've got a burst of whip up your sleeve, it can easily make it up and over the top of a loop, even when at quite low starting speeds. It's capable of looping where many other planes cannot, which can help you get out of trouble, as well as set up attacks for you. Next I'll hit rudder, and then elevator keys together, which quickly shows that the rudder is far weaker than the elevator. I tap the roll to try and straighten the plane and start a climbing spiral, which is very steep, almost vertical, due to the elevator's dominance. As the plane sl uh, slows beneath an IAS uh, of 150 km an hour, its handling becomes very sluggish and it loses the ability to turn. So in combat you must keep the plane's sp uh, speed as high as possible, otherwise you'll end up falling to the ground in flames. OK, time to test the ailerons and the plane's handling at high speed. It actually rolls quite well for a plane of this size. And it only starts to tighten up past 450 km an hour, but even past 600 it's still rolling really well. I'll point the plane up into a zoom climb. That's if I can hit the right key and avoid crashing to the ground. Right. And from an altitude of 600 metres at the bottom of the dive, I'll see how much it can recover going straight upwards using whip, and at around 2,300 uh, 2, metres it starts to struggle. So that's an eight, a 1,700 metre uh, zoom climb. But I'll take it a bit further to perform a stall hammerhead, just to show how poorly the plane handles using the rudder to flip it over. It's quite slow, and in fact it gets sluggish and I lose control of the plane. In fact I get no control back until it accelerates pa back past 150 km an hour which emphasises my point about needing to keep its speed as high as possible. Lastly, I'll go into another dive, just to show what happens to the plane's handling in general at high speed. The ailerons are OK, and we know the elevator's fine, but the rudder is not. And if you pull the mouse to the side, for instance if I'm tracking a target, the plane responds by lifting the nose, making it almost impossible to keep it pointing where you want. So in high speed attacks, you need to roll the plane first before using the mouse to track a target. Right, time to look at some battles. In a plane that can't manoeuvre that well and is a big target and needs to travel quickly, the best thing to do at the start is to gain some altitude. The P-38 has a great power to weight ratio as well as excellent lift off its wings, so you can basically point it straight up and climb at a sustained speed of around 220 km an hour. Of course some people prefer a slightly slower climb rate in exchange for more airspeed, but in arcade my thinking is that at the start of the battle you need to gain as much height as quickly as possible, and worry about speed when you're up past 4,000 metres. The first WEP gets me to around 3,200, although I could possibly have reached 3,300 if I'd climbed on a steeper angle after spawning. I also let the plane speed up to 250 km an hour while waiting for WEP to reactivate, and once again my angle isn't as steep as it could be on the next climb, so I'm not climbing as efficiently as possible in this battle. But even so, my plane's up past 4,000 metres before the WEP expires again. It's capable of reaching 4,300 if you manage to keep the speed closer to 220 during its climb. And that's similar to what BF-109s and the Spitfire Mark IIs are capable of. 
making this plane a good climber, but probably not the best. Now I'm being cautious in this game, climbing to the side and toward the sun as I want to avoid the initial merge. And now it's time to turn toward the battle, still climbing steadily, but at a higher speed. And you can see the benefits of that caution. There's a Chiker up there, probably equipped with rockets, also at a high altitude, and that's not a plane I want to tangle with on equal terms. There's also a Yak-1 hanging around. And I want to be well above both planes, so I can choose when and how to engage them. Climbing to the site has bought me enough time to reach that higher altitude, so now I have the advantage. I'm just wary of diving to attack that Yak. I firstly want to give him a chance to choose to climb at me and thereby stall his plane. The less energy he has, the easier a target he'll be. So for now I'm just tracking him and circling around, waiting to see what he does. Okay, the range is narrowing, which means he's climbing. He's within two kilometers, so now's the moment to strike. However, he sees me coming and goes into a dive himself. But I'm going fast enough to close into firing range. However, my shots go astray, and he easily dodges away where I cannot follow. So I give up on the attack and go back into a zoom climb. So he's diving away to ground level, so that's the last I'll see of him. Now I need only concern myself with the Chiker. I'd really love uh, to go bomber hunting right now, and there's plenty of bombers around in this game. But with dangerous fighters lurking around up here, I just can't afford to take the risk of ignoring them. I'm closing in quickly on the Chiker, which means he's also coming towards me. I have a good altitude advantage and plenty of speed. Now I want to set an energy trap to get him as slow as possible. So I'm going to let him get almost within gun's range, and then lift up into a loop. He's definitely coming straight at me. Right, climbing now. And not even a Chiker can sustain the kind of climb rate needed to keep up with me. I don't want to get too far away from him, so I'm levelling off at the top of the loop. Right, down into an attack. And as I drop down out of the loop, he's still trying to climb, but now his speed is gone. And with it, most of his manoeuvrability. He tries to break to the side, and I get that one shot at him, and I was lucky, lucky enough to make it count. Notice the difficulty I had keeping the guns on the target then. His horizontal turn was nearly more than the P-38's rudders could cope with, and I almost missed him altogether. And to be perfectly clear, I didn't find this plane easy to fly, mainly due to the weak rudder which restricts the manoeuvres you can perform with it, and sabotages its high speed handling. Which is quite a significant problem in a plane that needs to travel at high speed most of the time. By the way, I'm extending well out of gunner range before I turn for another pass at that PBY. I do not want to risk exposing the full profile of this fragile and flammable plane, and therefore risk being set alight. Anyway, the funny thing is that many of the friends I fly with and talk with on the forums love this plane, but while I was gathering footage for this video, I found it difficult to see why. It's quite fast, with great high attitude performance, and obviously its centrally mounted weapons are great, but even down at a battle rating of 2.3, there's a plane with similar attributes in the MiG-334. In the US lineup, the P-400 can also do pretty much everything a P-38 can, with similar weapons, and yet both those planes have strong rudders and much tougher damage models. And believe me, the weakness of its damage model is a huge minus for the P-38, particularly given its large profile that makes it a very easy target to hit. If you want to avoid taking damage, then you need to fly high and fast and conservatively, running away from any hint of an unfavourable situation and often going through battles with very few kills, which is what I found myself doing quite often. But a plane that behaves in that way has no real influence in today's arcade battles, and I'd rather find a way to be involved. If I feel that I can't be, then it's a plane I'd rather not fly. And more than any other, I've had to struggle to learn to fly this plane, particularly as no matter how careful I was, trouble would come looking for me, as it did in this battle. As I zoom climb, climb back past after 5,000 metres after killing the PBY, the Chaka pilot appears uh, seemingly from nowhere, and I'm caught at the top of my climb at low speed, and no time or space to force a head on. In most energy fighters, you'd probably be able to wear a spray of 7.62mm machine guns and dive away, but not in a P-38. Sure enough, I'm set alight. I kill the engine and dive, but even though the engine fire eventually extinguishes, the plane is very quickly an unflyable wreck. 
Notice the fuel fire from the wingtip as well, even though there's no tanks there. This was an exception by the way, most times fires do not go out on this plane, and once a light you die pretty quickly. Anything can and will light you up. You really cannot take any risk of receiving gunfire, no matter what caliber it is. So it's a plane that needs to travel fast, because its low speed handling is poor and it can't tank damage, but its high speed handling is hampered by the weak rudder. The only way to fly such a plane is with boom and zoom attacks, hoping your target doesn't dodge and praying no one catches you on the zoom climb. Despite its nose guns and pilot protection, you can't take the risk of head-ons, as the chance of losing engines and being set alight is just too great. Even at high altitude, it doesn't have that much of an advantage over many fighters, as I'll show in this next clip. Once again, I've side-climbed at the start. I'm now moving up beyond 5,000 metres, and I need to keep climbing, as there's a Spitfire and an I-16 up here with me. Both planes, and I can't risk engaging on anything like level terms, as they'd fly circles around me. The Spitfire is approaching but hasn't climbed any further, and the I-16 seems to be hunting bombers over at its base, so I decide to concentrate on the Spitfire for now. Just letting him pass by underneath. And the range is closing quickly, indicating that he's climbing, so I drop over into an attack, hoping to catch him unawares and low on energy. He breaks into a horizontal turn immediately, so he's obviously watching me, and as I try to follow, the nose lifts so I only scratch his paint before the moment's passed. That's the rudder again. I need to zoom climb back to safety. And he's trying to follow me, but he doesn't have that much speed after turning like that and he can't keep up. Now I could possibly have looped straight over right now into another attack, but I was worried about getting caught in a dogfight, so I chose to make sure of my altitude advantage first. Alright, he's trying to climb again, so down I go once more. The angle isn't great, so I roll the plane to try and align my wings with his. Once more he's turning sharply horizontally, and although I had a decent close range, close range shot at him, I am only awarded a hit, and back into a zoom climb I go. This time, he has enough speed to be able to prop hang after me and spray me from long range, and given how fragile this plane is, I'm forced to take evasive action, and then drop straight into another attack, with my energy advantage almost gone. He'd stalled his plane, but he's regained speed by the time I reached him. And this time I'm intent on either shooting him down or forcing him to dive away, so I stick with him, hoping to land a knockout blow. He breaks, and now I'm in a rolling scissors against a plane with far superior turning ability. And as quickly as possible I transition to a climbing spiral in order to shake him off. And fortunately for me he cannot keep up, and finally gives up and dives away. But you can see there, at high altitude, a Spitfire Mark I has outperformed my P-38. There he goes. I've still got to keep watching him though, because I do not trust him. Anyway, as enjoyable as high altitude duels like this can be, this illustrates another problem you'll face in this plane. You'll frequently be challenged at high altitude by fighters that can be very difficult to kill, and that soak up a huge amount of time. And with the short games common to today's arcade battles, that's often time I'd rather spend killing enemy bombers and escorting my own. I'm still monitoring that Spitfire, in case he has ideas of uh, zoom climbing up at me. Indeed I attack him to force him to give up and finally dive away. So now, can I at long last go bomber hunting? Unfortunately not. As the I-16 I saw at the start of the battle has taken advantage of my preoccupation with the Spit, and has flown over to me. And like the Chiker in the previous battle, he's just appeared from nowhere, and once again I'm caught by a superior turn fighter at close speed and at uh, close range and at low speed, and there's nothing I can do to avoid my fate. This time it's not a fire, but a loss of my tail controls, which is something else that happens with an alarming regularity with this plane. By the way, if I'm struggling this much at high altitude in ground strike battles, imagine how difficult this plane is to find the lower altitude fighting common to domination battles. You might even be asking whether the plane's even worth flying at this point. Indeed, I was asking that question too. Fortunately, my friend stepped in to help, uh, this time in the form of Master BLB, who offered to give me a hand by squatting up for a few battles. I'm picking up the action after our initial climb to altitude. But before I just start um, discussing this game, take a moment to think about the planes that have shot me down or given me trouble so far. A Chiker, which many people regard as over-tiered at 2.7, a Spitfire, which is rated at 2.3, and an I-16 at 2.0. All of them lower-tiered planes, 
which a fast, a fast energy fighter like a P-38 should be able to handle with ease at high altitude. Heaven help you if you're caught up here by a BF-109F4 or a KI-43-3 or a Spitfire Mark IX. In my opinion, you wouldn't stand a chance provided the other pilot knows what he's doing. Anyway, in this game, nobody's even tried to contest high altitude, so it was ours for the taking. Plus, I was presented with an easy early kill. A canoe of destiny is making a belated bid to uh, climb up to us, but Master and I uh, combined to take him out. Right, and looking at the enemy planes in the air, they're all fairly low ranked, so the Merchmacker has been very kind to us in this battle. If there's ever going to be a chance to show what this plane can do, then it has to be now. However, that thick layer of fog, which almost extends to the ground level, could make things difficult if no one tries to climb and bombers stop spawning. I'm looking for anyone who's climbed, and, and this KI-43 is an obvious target for a boom and zoom attack. He doesn't see my approach, which makes this a second easy kill. And this is exactly the kind of attack you should practice most of the time in this plane. A loop and drop in from above. Up into the zoom climb once again and then checking my surroundings, which is especially vital in a cloudy game like this one as planes can appear out of the cloud layer without warning. There's no more targets just yet, but at this early stage of the game I'm prepared to be patient and wait to see what happens. That P-40 is possibly a target. Just checking to see what Master's up to. Right, I'm going to go into a shallow dive to gain speed, just in case he doesn't dive back into the fog. Right, time to attack. Don't think he knows I'm here. Nevertheless, he does start to go into a dive here, probably because he's got other targets he wants to attack. I guess he knows I'm here now. That attack took me a fair bit lower than I intended, and I need to be careful not to get sucked into the cloud like this, or I could end up flying straight into a mountain. Okay, just scanning for more targets. That SU-2 looks like it. it's a possible. However, there's a zero behind, which is potentially a threat. Just got to monitor what they do. No one else up at altitude. Yeah, zero is a bit close for comfort, so I'm not going to go into any attacks right now. Indeed, at this point, he sees me and starts climbing up at me. Now, I think about possibly uh, doing some stall fighting here and getting him to uh, stall out, but then I see that Master's on a nice interception course. So I'm happy for him to complete a dragon bag kill. Doesn't get it immediately, but sets him alight. And eventually that's going to uh, kill the zero. Just looking now to see if Master's picked up a tail. Anyone's chasing him back up on his zoom climb. Doesn't appear to be the case, but then I notice a P-47's appeared out of the clouds. But I have more than enough speed to climb away from his attempted head-on loop over the top, and that gets me my fourth kill. You can see what I mean about looping in this plane. It is the go-to tactic. Here, though, I make a mistake. Instead of checking my surroundings, I assume I'm in the clear and continue my dive to attack this SU-2. And in doing so, I fail to see a KI-43 that had been stalking me from the side of the map. Due to the rudder, I couldn't keep the SU-2 in my sights, and as I zoom climb, the KI-43 pilot makes his move. Yes, it's the same 43 pilot that I shot down earlier, and he's obviously looking for revenge. And I've handed him an opportunity on a silver platter. I don't immediately dive, though, as there's a friendly buffalo here as well, so I hang around for a few turns in the hope that he'll shoot the 43 down for me. Notice I'm already trailing oil from both engines after that first spray, and therefore I'm doomed uh, to losing my engines, assuming I survived this situation. To make matters worse, a second 43 is joining in, so now it really is time to dive out of trouble. 
Fortunately, though, I got a nice shot at this plane and took it out on my way down. Now it's basically a case of outrunning that Hayabusa, which I should be able to do easily enough, assuming he doesn't set me alight. I just need to watch for mountains and trees and cross my fingers hoping I'm not going to fly straight at the side of a cliff. Well, that was a bit hairy, but it looks like I've escaped to fight on. A bit of ele elevator damage, but uh, not enough to cripple me. Just a question of how long, though, before my engines lose all of their coolant and uh, conk out. Pushing up into a zoom climb as hard as I can to regain as much altitude as possible. I'm not really at a comfortable altitude just yet, though. I'm a bit concerned about the approaching lag 3 in the distance. He seems to have a bit of height under his wings and to be coming straight for me. Plus there's some bandits directly underneath who are a bit too close for comfort. Indeed, I think about attacking a P-36, only to abort. And then see the lag is definitely headed my way. I haven't the energy to fight him and I don't want to risk a head-on, so for now I decide simply to fly away and outclimb him, which I should be able to do easily enough. And sure enough, that's created another dragon bag setup, and Master sees the opportunity and lines up another kill. Turning back as the lag's not engaged on me anymore. And I see that 400 is interested in Master. Indeed, as he extends away, it's evident that the 400 is definitely following him. So now it's his turn to act as bait, and my turn to intercept. If only I could aim straight. That would be wasteful firing in uh, RB or SB, but then with the reloads in AB it's worthwhile just keeping blazing away, because a stray bullet is just as good at hitting as um, an accurately aimed burst. So now my enemies tried climbing for a while, so I flew to the enemy side of the map and found a B5N2 had just spawned. I decided to go into a shallow dive, firstly to stop him from diving, and secondly to fool him into thinking that maybe I wasn't going to attack. Indeed, he responded by climbing as if to fly above me. But that was never going to work. And B5N2s are so very, very fragile. Okay, just continuing my zoom climb, though I really should be laying off the web as my engine temperatures are in the red. Another bomber spawns below me, which gives me with yet another easy kill. And with only a few exceptions, I really haven't had to work hard for any of them in this game. It's almost like a bit of a training run. This is how you'd fly the plane if uh, no one challenges you. and assuming there's plenty of targets to take on, up at your preferred altitude. Fortunately, that's not the case in most arcade games. And to cap it off, right on cue, a B-25 has spawned. It's a simple matter of looping over and dropping down for another vertical, vertical attack. Now, I'd much rather engage B-25s from underneath to avoid their gunners, but our relative speeds are quite high. And anyway, I hope to kill him in this single pass, which is indeed what happens. And it was around this time in the game that what I feared earlier has finally happened. No more bombers spawning in, no one trying to climb or even poking their noses above the clouds. And in the arcade of patch 1.45, this scenario is all too common, as everything important happens down at ground level in most games. And now both engines turn pink, so I decide it's time to start wandering back in the direction of my airfield. And while I do so, here's a summary of my tactics for flying this plane. It performs best at high altitude. You must avoid getting caught at low speed. Use loops and diving attacks and line up your wings with those of your target. And avoid getting caught in a turn fight. If you're forced to dogfight, use the looping ability of the plane rather than turning horizontally. Its weaknesses are a fragile and flammable damage model and an ineffective rudder that interferes with its high-speed handling. Avoid using rope dopes and hammerhead turns, it's just not good at either of them. 
When I started recording footage for this video, I'd flown it 21 times for 35 kills and 8 deaths, usually taking it out as a backup for other planes. Since then I've had another 27 flyouts using it as the first plane in my lineup, killing another 83 planes at the cost of 5 deaths and averaging 3 kills per flyer, which indicates the trouble I've had getting involved in battles and dominating in this plane. This last battle has been great, but that's only because the matchmaking was kind and we were, in, we were gifted control of high altitude without having to fight for it, and being in a squad certainly hasn't hurt either. I haven't been able to score another double figure kill tally since this game. Anyway, both my engines are now black, but they still haven't quite died, and I have a climbing lag beneath me that needs to be dealt with. As usual, I loop the plane over, drop down into an attack from above, rolling in order to align my wings with his, and while the engines are still working, I'm still thinking about attacking rather than going back to land, as the battle could end at any moment. So when I spot a few more targets, I fly over to them. Now this lag looks like he's separated himself from the others. If he doesn't dodge too much, he could be another easy kill. I'm not dropping in from directly above, and I've got a bit of distance to close in. Plus he's tracking another target that's now flown past. But fortunately for me, he performs a split S rather than breaking to the side. So I can follow his movements and shoot him down. Now I don't like the look of that Hellcat lurking in the clouds behind me. And as I extend away, my engines begin to die in earnest. I'm really surprised they've lasted this long, to be honest. So I'm definitely headed toward my base now. Now I'm sure there are many people watching this video who love this plane and will disagree with my assessment of it. It may be that I've missed some feature of the P-38 that actually makes it a great plane to fly using some tactic or other, but for me I can't see anything about it that other planes, even lower ranked planes, can't do better. Please feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. Anyway, the engines give me a last burst of life. And I turn to see that the Hellcat is still lurking around. There he is, still too close for comfort. But then finally both of them splutter to a stop. And I really do need to land in case that Hellcat jumps up and sprays me while I'm gliding along. And as luck would have it, as I drop through the clouds, there he is right in front of me. Another easy kill to cap off a game that was full of them. Now it's just a matter of getting this thing onto the ground, which given the short runways on this map and my tight angle of approach is far from easy. Well, I do hope you've enjoyed this video. As you may have gathered, I didn't have that much fun flying this plane, but I did like the discussions that generate on the Academy forum, and I especially appreciate people offering to help me out. Nonetheless, the P-38 is now out of my lineup and back in my hangar. And I'm not telling new pilots not to bother flying it, as perhaps it just doesn't mesh with my own personal playstyle. And I hate making videos that give a negative impression of a plane that other people love, but I do have to call it how I see it. I am glad though that it has strong landing gear. Not every plane would have survived that kind of impact. Anyway, that's all I have for you in this vid. Next one will probably be on the MiG-334. Until then, I'll see you in the skies.